Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. In this video I'm going to talk about some stuff in the fish room, let's have a look and see what's going on. But you'll notice I've got this little thing here which is... It's great, I don't even have to leave my street now to get some awesome fish tank deals. So this is a little 2 foot by 1 foot by 1 foot dual aquarium. Which is fantastic, it's got a nice little T5 or T8 light there I think it is. Um, it came from one of my neighbours who called me in the street and said Graham we've got a fish tank, it's a bit neglected, we need you to help take it off our hands. I actually thought they just wanted me to take the fish but they just gave me everything so I've got this. I've got one of those stingray filters, air pump, air stones, gravel, the whole kit and caboodle as well as the livestock. Um, but the tank, I've cleaned it up. Uh, emptied out and cleaned it up and it's, it's in really good condition but it wasn't even that dirty when I got it usually when people say to me oh we've got a fish tank it's been a bit neglected you get there and you can't even see inside it it was actually it was spotless when they gave me it um, the husband said it's not actually neglected he just doesn't think his wife likes it anymore so that's why I ended up getting it but yeah it's a great deal um, I'm thinking of using this I'll probably get rid of the lead if we take the lid off, it's not got a centre brace or anything, so I think it kind of looks like a little aquascaping tank. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not like your ADA tanks or anything like that, but I think that will work quite well. So I might replace the killifish tank in my office with this and escape it a bit and see how we get on. Hopefully, my Felix Lab will turn up one day and we can use this as a practice tank. Um, but I just thought I'd show you that sometimes deals come to you and you don't have to go hunting. But if you want to look at the fish that we got with them as well, it's also the first time I've kept these specific ones. And we got these guys. So these are the fish that came in with them. As you can see they're all adults and mostly females. So we've got five of them. They're golden white cloud mountain minnows. At least I think they are, unless I'm horrifically wrong. Uh, one male, four females. Two of the females look pretty big, as if they're about to burst. Um, but they came with these plants as well. And as you can see, the plants themselves, not a, not a hint of algae or anything like that. There's also a big, couple of big fat shrimp in there as well. You can see that one if it ever focuses on it. So we've got one buried shrimp. There's a couple of others in there as well. Um, one, two, three, four, four I can count. So we've got what looks like five fish, at least four amano shrimp, if not five. There's a few snails in there, a few plants still in pots, still with um, tickets on them as well. So I've done really well out of this, almost zero effort. I've got quite a nice collection in here, so I've just left them in here as a bit of a quarantine for now. Um, but the plan is... Well, I don't know what the plan is. One of the plans was to put them in the pond out the front. But they've lived inside a house all their lives, so I don't know how much they would like that. So one of my other plans I'm considering is... This tank. I have had an offer for someone to come and take away all the fish and all the inverts and all that kind of stuff so I might turn that into another tank for these guys and see if we can't get them breathed up into a nice big group and um, because I've never kept these before I have had white cloud mountain minnows before and um, but I've never kept these guys before and I did I really like them and um, you don't need a heater or anything like that you don't need a heater with most fish but you definitely don't need them with these and they school really well together in big numbers, so hopefully if I can build that group up, we'll do really well. Might even just try it in here and see how they get on for now. What you need to do, or what you should do, is put in some kind of breeding mop, um, or just a like, bunch of java moss or something like that, because they tend to drop their eggs in the... Oh, they'll drop their eggs in the java moss, uh, and fertilise them in there, and they're pretty good parents in that they don't eat, they're young but they don't raise them either, really. So, hopefully, 
and get a nice big group of them. And that'll look really good together when they're all schooling together. And then I can redistribute the plants and things like that. So that's my plan so far. And what do you think? What's the best deal you've ever had? I think that's the best deal I've ever had, but I haven't had to leave the end of my driveway for someone to offer me a free tank, free fish, shrimp, plants, gravel, the whole kit and caboodle. Got the gravel down here. A nice big bucket full of white and black gravel. It's not my style, but I'm sure we'll find a use for it. Um, while we're down here, update on the shrimp. I have now found three. There are three shrimp in there alive, which makes me think that they're all in there alive. I just haven't found the other two. Still nothing on these two tanks, so we've lost the guppies and we've lost the um, fry for the killifish. But I think I found some killifish fry up in the killifish tank. So I think they've been quite prolific. Over here, this is the tank that I put the apistos in. Um, I now can't see any, but I saw them literally two minutes ago. But they've been doing well, as far as I can tell. They've been out looking happy, not looking stressed, nice and colourful. Um, if you remember, I said I think I've drilled these holes to make sure that they're not big enough for the bristle noses to get in. You can see that down there. It's not stopped one of them trying. But I think they've got enough hidey holes that they can get on with things. The bristle noses are looking good. I'm pretty sure we've got either eggs and fry in that bottom one down there. Uh, somebody commented that, yeah, this, this is fine for an idea, but when it comes to catching all these, that's when the problems kick in. And I know that feeling, and I've had that happen before. What I tend to do is set up some kind of trap where you just have some food in, whether it be a bit of courgette or something like that, like we've got over here, and then wait for them all to crowd around it and then you just let a net fall on it or you pull a thing away and the, nets of the, the net fall on it. You don't catch them all but you catch enough. Um, but yeah, this tank, I mean it, it looks better. I don't know if you'll agree. It looks as if it's had some sort of scaping effort put into it. So even though it is a practical tank for breeding purposes it's also not horrible on the eye. Even though it's manky and it's a good a good hoovering. Um, like I say, these fish will be going at the end of the month. We've got the cardinals just about ready to go up to the, the big display tank. And then these new fish. So that was it, just a quick one today, trying to keep my run going of videos every day. Um, I'm not sure how long I'll be able to keep that up. I've got a new one coming, but I filmed part of it today for how to treat blackbeard algae or how to use hydrogen peroxide, which is a word that seems I um, can't pronounce properly when I've got a camera pointed at me. Yeah, so there'll be bloopers on that video as well. That'll probably be out tomorrow or the next day. Um, but until then, let me know in the comments what you're up to in the fishy world these days, and I'll see you later. Bye!